Live from the Panera Studios, it's the Reading with Robin show, brought to you each week by my friends at Panera Bread. It's where I go to start my day just right. There's nothing like that first and second mug of coffee. It's always hot and fresh and at your neighborhood Panera. I even take some to go. Let Panera cater the holidays. Panera Catering takes the stress out of meal planning for your holiday events, big and small. Visit PaneraBread.com. Check out all of the delicious menu items. Order ahead, and they'll have it ready for you for a quick and easy pickup. Give yourself a gift this holiday season, and let Panera do the cooking. All at Panera Bread. Reading with Robin also brought to you by Point Street Reading Series. It's the third Tuesday of every month. This month's series is on the 20th with authors Anne Hood, Michael Ruhlman, Holly Robinson, Mary Capello, and Jason Diamond. For more information, please visit Point Street Reading Series on Facebook. And now, enjoy the show. This is a thrill to wind the year up talking with one of my favorite book chatters, Tina Jordan. She writes for Entertainment Weekly. I love following her on Twitter at EWT, Tina Jordan, and it is always fun to chat books. We have so many that we love in common. You can also find her as the host of Off the Books on Entertainment Weekly Live on Sirius XM. Are you on all different times, Tina? I'm always looking, like, when's Tina on the radio? You know, I think I'm technically on on Mondays at okay. 6, but it's, if okay. you have Sirius, it's also available on demand, and I do think they repeat it during the week, but I don't think it's always repeated at the same times. Okay, well, then confused about that myself. <laughs> you make me feel much better because <laughs> I was a little confused, too. Okay, so pretty much live on Mondays at 6 o'clock on the um, Entertainment Weekly channel, and then you can find Tina around. I love following her. Like I said, you can go follow her on Twitter. Always great to see what she's reading. I love following her train reading, and it is a pleasure to have you back on the show. Welcome back to Reading with Robin, Tina Jordan. Thanks for having me. So much fun. Oh, I love it. I love the picture of your coffee table. What oh, my God. Your coffee. <laughs> now, do you organize that just a little bit, and people can see that on, on Twitter. Tina's posted the picture, or that's just the way it looks. If that's just the way it looks is stacks. Um, I must admit, I think the stacks are a little more even and neat than usual because my mother <laughs> arrives tonight for the holidays. Oh, so boy. <laughs> I've, you know, been busy dusting and Windexing. So it's no, probably it's just, looking pretty good right now. But the rule about my coffee glorious. table covered with yes. galleys and books, you can put your drinks down there. You can put your mm. food down there. If I have a nice mm-hmm. book, it's not sitting there. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I, I okay. like that because – don't you like your books? I mean, I know I like mine to look lived in. The nice ones, the ones that are signed, maybe on the shelves differently, but the galleys are the ones that I really love to thumb through. I like them to be part of the community that is this house. I, exactly. You know, it's cozy, right? Right. Oh, I see a few. I'd love to put my drink down on right here. I'm looking at this <laughs> picture. Plus, those colored pens look like such a wonderful centerpiece. And oh, all that's of the be- different things you've got. But that's because I do keep a few coloring books on the coffee table. They're probably oh. hidden under all the junk. But people, yeah. <laughs> I've discovered having a couple of those around is also, I don't actually like doing them myself. I get very frustrated. Mm-hmm. But um, other people do love them. So I keep a couple of, they're hidden underneath, but there are coloring books there. But I'm with I you love about that. So like, it's like a little bit of a puzzle. So you, you're visiting with, you, you know, when somebody wants like not to be reading at the moment, they'd like to color. If you search around on your coffee table, I'm like I'm like looking, like looking for Waldo. But <laughs> um, <laughs> right. So you're I mean, you're the same with that. It's just lived in, right? It's lived in, and you know my kids are in their twenties, but I want them to feel like they can come pick anything up too. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to be yes. precious about it. Like if mm-hmm. I have thumbed through and underlined a galley and put my coffee cup down on it, I don't know. I think they don't feel like worried that, you know, they're going to mess up something of mom's. You know what I mean? I like that. uh, The idea of not keeping things is so precious. Just in general, you really want to use the things because after all, then what happens? Some of my favorite galleys have those coffee rings on them because my coffee cups are everywhere. I do. (laughs) Pick them up. Um, The one that jumps out most immediately to me is Dennis Lehane's. And then I saw you were reading that on a snowy day. So. 
I, I so have not good. seen this one yet. Is it? I'm sure. It's okay, so I'm I'm a Dennis Lehane fan. I I don't even, but I don't know if I read the last one. But this one, I believe, is the first one he's ever written that's from the point of view of a female narrator. Oh, and wow. she's really, you know, psychologically damaged and fascinating. I mean, it's it's. I sort of want to go close myself in the book closet here at work so I can finish it today. Oh, do you have a book closet at work? I love well, that. yeah, we have open floor plan. So it's oh, not really conducive okay. to reading. But I have a closet for book storage, and I have put in a rug and two butterfly chairs with pink fur and some footstools. Oh, that's awesome. I'll tweet a picture for you. Please so I go in there and read. That. Yeah, because, I go yeah, in there and read. Because, I love that idea because when you have an open floor plan, I mean, just as the name would suggest, that I'm on the phone chatting with Tina Jordan, one of my very favorite people to chat books with. She is the books editor at Entertainment Weekly. I love reading what's going on at Entertainment Weekly and especially the books, movies, TV, everything, but really the books, it's just one of one of my treats. And you've got to know where to hide out. Same at like maybe a family party. You have to have some kind of a, a, like a, a space of peace and refuge, you know, because it's especially the holiday times. Everyone should have their own pink, you know, fluffy hideaway, I think. I agree. I totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> Do they know that's where you are? Does somebody be like, oh, where, where is Tina reading now? Go find they, her in the butterfly. They know where I am, I'm afraid. <laughs> they know where to find me. <laughs> Yeah, because that's the thing when you're working around books, if you have any sort of downtime ever, it's just never empty. You have a, you know, grab a book. I will always right. joke around with, with friends who are working in the book biz. If there's a down moment, like, you know, I'm sure you have something to do. But so this book, so Dennis Lehane's new book, which comes out is it like May. I, I think it's May. Yes. May. And since we fell, fell, the cover is fabulous. And, Speaking of, you have the great year for book jackets and that if people go to EW.com and you can search it, because after all, we do judge. We absolutely judge books by their covers. I mean, whether you're scrolling through Amazon mm-hmm. or you're in a physical bookstore, why do your eyes light on something, a book that mm-hmm. you don't know? It's because yes. of the way the jacket looks. No question. No question. No question, and I and I love to say that. And I'm looking at some of the ones that you have here. Um, so yeah, <laughs> Jesse, I knew it was yeah, Jesse. Um, Homegoing, that bright yellow cover with the, with the red and the blue and the black just pops, and just such a wonderful book that people were talking about all year. And Tina and I were talking off air. I think we've we've talked about the books of 2016 a lot, but the covers continue to dazzle. You've got Cannibals in Love, which was one of my daughter's favorite books, um, mm-hmm. and that is a really cool cover. Um, the Guinevere's, which was one of my very favorite books this year, mm-hmm. which was some of your we, – we're not going to talk that much 2016 because we're on to, to the next year. We're already, we're already there, but which were right. some of your favorites from this year? I also loved The Guinevere's a lot. Um, oh, so good. I, I loved The Girls, the Emma Klein mm-hmm. novel. It's sort of loosely based on the Charles Manson cult. Yeah. I loved, I loved Sweet Bitter, which was a you know a coming-of-age novel set in the New York City restaurant world. I, I felt like when Breath Becomes Air, you know, the, memory, the, the memoir yes. by the um, neurosurgeon who was dying of cancer, like oh, that yes. continues to be the book that I can't get out of my head. I have to. Say. I haven't read it yet. I should really. I know I need to read it. That's one of the books that so many people will say you haven't read. When yeah. Breath Becomes Air, I, is it? I, I'm sure it's hopeful and uplifting in such a. I mean, since we know what sort of happens, but how do you sort of right. reconcile that when you're reading? Well, it's interesting because his thing is like, look, you know, as Americans, we don't like. To think about death, it's just a thought that we push aside. You know, we're all going to die someday, but we're we sort of have our fingers in our ears and we're going la 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 la. Um, <laughs> oh. I like that song, Tina. That's right? one of my favorite. The la 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 song, <laughs> my so, favorite. But when when you've been handed a stage four cancer diagnosis, you don't have that luxury, right. and so he 
really wanted, you know, to examine for himself, like, what he was feeling. And, yeah. you know, I I just thought it was, it's not maudlin. Sure, it's sure. sad in places. I mean, he's dying, but it's very hopeful in a lot of places. I mean, he and his wife decided to have a child. I know. I, I mean, and I, I do know some of that, and that is just amazing. And are they making that? Into, I, I've got to think it's a movie in the making. That's a good question. I don't know the answer to that. Surely it is. Yeah, I don't know. But let's just say we're deciding that it must be. How could it not be? How could it but not be? But that's the thing, right, living with hope, because we just never know anyway, right? So right. To, to take that perspective, but to have the wherewithal to be writing the story and to be sharing that and to leave this, um, it's just remarkable Sometimes I'm more fascinated with the actual story behind the story, and then, you know, I get to the book, but it's the fascination with really what people can do and share and be so raw about that's just mind-boggling to me sometimes. And it actually reminds me in a different way, but one of my favorite books last year was Kerry Egan's On Living, which right. at the face of it, I wouldn't have thought, okay, this is a book. And I've been telling everybody to read that. It's just mm-hmm. too good to miss. And um, mm-hmm. yeah, I guess we are all going at one point, wherever it is we're going. <laughs> right. I guess there's that. <laughs> Happy holidays, everybody. Tina Jordan, right. reading with Robin. Uh, but it's it's true. I mean, that's it's true. That's just the way it is. And and looking forward to 2017, I know the I just got back from a trip, so one of my favorite things when I return is to see the envelopes, and mm-hmm. I I push them aside to to wait because it's just overwhelming what's already here. So I I hope Dennis Lahane's book is in one of those packages now that right now that I'm thinking of it. Uh, so what are some of the ones that you just can't wait to share with the Entertainment Weekly readers and your listeners? Well, there's three novels that I've already read that I loved, which surprises me because, you know, I felt like, you know, 2016 was a, a strong year for books. and Very strong. Absolutely. And I, yeah. And I keep just sort of being blown away as I pick up 2017 books, and it really surprises me. I just finished this one. I think it's coming from Echo um, in June, and it's called our Little Racket by Angelica Baker. Oh, Have you heard of I'm, this? I've heard of it. I haven't read it yet. I'm super excited about it, and I've been going back and forth with Angelica, and I, I only know enough about it to already be excited. But now that I, you're telling me that you loved it, I'm even more excited. Yeah, so it's about this Bernie Madoff-like character who's, you know, created – whose hedge fund is basically a Ponzi scheme, right? And he gets mm-hmm. caught. So the novel is about him, but it's told from the alternating viewpoints of the women in his life. You know, a friend, his daughter. Um, And it's really fascinating. I thought it was great. Yeah, I thought that was fabulous. And is it it a debut, I think? I think it's a debut. Yeah, I think you're right. I read, I was reading some of the upcoming, uh, you know, the, the titles and the blurbs and which ones I was interested in. That one just jumped out at me. So yeah. that's Angelica Baker, Our Little Racket, and it comes out this summer. Uh, it's May or June, I know. Yeah, um, it's, um, it is June 20th. Okay. So it's a just ways Just around away. the corner. Right, just, just around away. the corner. Well, it will feel like that, though, won't it? I mean, when you're it reading will. ahead in that way. And I know you read on the train a lot. Do people ever come over and say, hmm, I haven't seen that title? What yeah, is, what they do. do. They do? Mm-hmm. Do they yeah. have that? Yeah. And do you just, like, get that little, like, well, you can't read yeah. it yet. But yeah, right down, you'll, you'll see be looking it forward to it. Right. I know. As sooner than I know, and it, it does, it comes up so quickly. And um, that is very exciting to know. So that's your first novel, Our Little Racket. Mm-hmm. The second novel I loved was is by a woman named Sarah Schmidt, and it's called See What I Have Done. Do not and know it's, this one. It's the okay. story of Lizzie Borden. Oh, and okay. I did hear there was a Lizzie Borden book. Okay. See what it's, I and it's really great. It's got an amazing jacket. But I think the surprise, and of course it's a novel, so who knows, but the novelist <laughs> did tons of research. But I think the real surprise is that as it unfolds in the book, you see that it might not have happened exactly like we thought, you know, mm. from pop culture, like all the legends passed down over the years. It's really chilling and really good. I mean, if you like psychological thrillers, this is a great yes, one. Yes, I do. This is and, a great and one. P- and, the, and the readers do. I mean, look at all of the 
most recent amazing psychological thrillers oh, and know. how they've done. I mean, the, well, the readers are definitely driving that part of the market. So that's very exciting news for people who like to read that. Well, there's a great one coming very soon, and it's called The River at Night. Have you read that? Yeah. No, I haven't. I, I've had, I have it here. It looks amazing. So it, I'm, I'm glad right. to know that. It's about several women who go on a whitewater rafting trip in a, in a place where cell phones don't work. You know, when they say that, I'm like, don't go, don't go. <laughs> you know, your cell phone won't don't work, don't, don't go. Right. Yeah. We're in 2016, 17. Take a right. cell phone. Right. Right. <laughs> so it's really, it's one of those books where you actually, like, feel a little sweaty and panicky as oh, you're wow. reading. Yeah, no, oh, so it's, it's good. It's a real racer. Well, and also Her Every Fear, Peter Swanson's book comes out. It's the beginning of January. That's mm-hmm. another real page-turning, thrilling book for people who are listening. And I'm on the phone with Tina Jordan of Entertainment Weekly. Follow her on Twitter. So much fun at EW Tina Jordan and find out what she's reading, what you can look forward to read. You have fabulous taste, and I, I really love following your books. So you've got, okay, so see what I've done, Our Little Racket, and what's the third novel that you've loved so far? Oh, The River at Night. Oh, right? that Wait, did we say okay. that? That was the other one. No, Although the one, okay. the one I was going to talk about was one called The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. Have you heard about this? I, I actually don't think so. Well, it's YA. Um, but you know, YA and this, like, I don't even, I don't even know why we differentiate between YA and adult fiction. It's so stupid. Um, Well, it's marketing. That's why whoever's listening, that's that's right. It's all marked. They need to shelve it someplace, right? They need to shelve it someplace. Correct. Exactly. But I love YA. Uh, Julie Buxbaum has a new one coming out in April, I think. And she's one of my favorites. Um, She's Mm -hmm. written both, but her last few or YA, yes, and don't yeah, don't let YA fool you. So the hate you give is YA title that you love, right? It's Angie Thomas. It's about a girl who's sort of navigating the, you know, this kind of tricky path between the poor neighborhood where she lives and the fancy private school that she has a scholarship to, um, mm-hmm. and she sees the police gun down her best friend. She's a witness. Oh wow! And it's very current, it's very topical, but it is so good that I actually think that it might be one of those books that kids are still reading in 10 years, you know. Oh, I mean, so really, I think yes, it's a it becomes yeah. a, a classic, like Perks yeah. of Being a Wallflower classic. I, right. I love that. And, and really, who in, who in their own heart is not still a YA reader or, or a oh, YA please. or yeah. wants to be, right? So that's right. great. The Hate You Give, and I saw you post, one of my favorites for 2017, I was reading on my trip, this memoir, The Rules Do Not Apply, Ariel Levy. Oh, oh my yeah. God. So good. So good. There's so many good memoirs, but hers, she's the New Yorker writer. You may remember her mm-hmm. essays from the New Yorker. And I think from her memoir, the the New Yorker piece that sticks out to me is the one called Thanksgiving in Mongolia, in which she's mm-hmm. describing as a journalist being on a trip to Mongolia and going into early labor in the hotel she's staying at and you've read it so you know it's just devastating yeah. it really is it, it i mean the way i mean it, they tell you right at the beginning certain things that happen and the cover talk about covers that pop and this one's out march 14th yes and memoirs i know last year and, and actually um Ariel Levy, An Abbreviated Life, that's the title. Yeah. Um, when I'm not sitting amongst my books, it could be a dangerous thing. But there were so many wonderful memoirs in 2016, so I hope we can – I'm really a fan. I am, too. I'm a memoir, memoir fan. Memoir. And, you know, there's actually yes. some celebrity memoirs I'm actually super interested in. Um, this year, there's the Gabby Sidibe mm-hmm. uh, oh, memoir, wow. This Is Just My Face. Mm-hmm. Um, which I think is uh, a title. collection of essays, right? I think it's a great title. I think it's a great jacket, actually. You know, there's an Alec Baldwin memoir called Nevertheless, yes. which I think he's <laughs> writing. He's written himself, which I believe, actually. He's a yeah, smart he's guy. A, such a talent. And, yeah, isn't it a great title? Nevertheless. It, nevertheless, right? I wonder um, if Larry David's like, why didn't I pick that title? I know, right? <laughs> the kind of title he would pick. So, um, yeah, so Gabby's. There's Alec. that. You know, mm-hmm. there's the Caitlyn Jenner memoir, which I'm curious about. Wow. It's being written by Buzz Bissinger, the Friday Night Lights mm-hmm. author, um, who yeah. wrote the Vanity Fair profile of Caitlyn Jenner. I'm 
Look, I'm in. I'm yeah. Me up. I, I want to read that. Now, did um, now was this solely written, that, uh, or did they co-write it, or it was solely? I you know. I'm not sure how they worked. Clearly, for the Vanity Fair piece, they spent hundreds of hours together and sure. ta- taped, yeah. you know, I don't know how many hours. And my guess is that Buzz Bissinger is putting it together from tapes. But we interviewed Bissinger after this deal happened, and he was like, look, I agreed to do this, but I, I'm not a pushover. I'm, you know, she's going to have to talk. She's going to have to be honest wow. and answer questions, and I'm going to push her on stuff. So... And we want to know. I mean, there's nothing like a celebrity memoir. And that's why I, and I've read about certain celebrities that don't want to write them. They have a story to tell, but sometimes the, the houses want the story or a certain story. And if they're not willing to sort of go there, then there's this idea of what will the readers really be interested in? I can't imagine there's anything that Caitlyn right. Jenner will have to say that people won't be interested in. Right. So, um, you know, so that'll be and- really fascinating. And obviously, like Alec Baldwin, I think the reason so many celebrity memoirs don't work is that they're basically very edited mm-hmm. takes on exactly. a person's life. But something tells sure. me that Alec Baldwin doesn't mind burning bridges. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb because, here. It might be that, that trail of burning bridges that uh, yeah. is still smoking behind him. He's just a fascinating, fascinating character. Right. So we have those those to look forward to. Um, Amy, did, did you read Amy Popel's Small Admissions? That one comes out. Actually, comes out next week. But I, I think not it read that, but I want to. It's tr- it's just um, one of those. Like some of the books like this to me that were fabulous last year, like The Assistants and Georgia Clark's The Regulars or Rich and Pretty, just like treat, sit down, smart, funny, deep, awesome jacket, that kind of book. Um, mm-hmm. So that one, um, she's coming here to Point Street Reading Series in January. So I think of her as 2017, but truly it's the end of December. So there's, I don't know if that can, that's considered any kind of, of crossover um, read, but I have I have my galleys all over. I just like to see them and then, oh, yeah. uh, you know, just sort of pull them down. And so for yours, and I, I'm looking, I'm still looking at your cocktail table, which has given me all sorts of decorating <laughs> ideas. <laughs> but the thing, too, is like I know when everybody comes home, I put things away, and you know, just so that they're still there. Right. I'm happy to share, but I want to know, uh, you know, what happened. Somehow the Riverhead title seemed to disappear when family members come home. Surprise, and surprise. So, <laughs> right? I mean, those titles just say jump in my bag. Mm-hmm. And yeah. there, are, there are so many wonderful ones. But I do like to share, and that's what, that's what books are for. And, uh, and there's, I mean, if 2016 was a banner year, I'm quite confident as you're saying, 2017 is already stacking up to be yeah. amazing. And when did the, when do you start doing those lists, like the most anticipated books of 2017? Uh, I'm working on that right now. Oh, I'm okay. On well, then I yeah. should let you go, Tina Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see your list of of most anticipated because, right, I just saw it so far. I saw one list come out. Um, and I always like to see which ones are just the people are – uh, in full agreement, you know, do not miss yeah. this book or that book. But there's so many. There's so many, right? Well, I'm very excited. Um, you've given me lots of new titles, and I can only imagine how many more will be added since as 2016 comes to a close. And what are you reading right now? Um, I'm reading that Dennis Lehane. Still oh, reading okay, it. You are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I love the photo of you. I know, well, because you had there was snow, so that's what right. it was. It was snow. Yeah, it was, there is nothing like snow day reading. Yeah, I know it's the best. It really is. It is the best. Well, thank you so much. People can find you on Twitter. Is that the best place to find you? Yeah, that's course. the best place yeah. at EW Tina Jordan. At EW Tina Jordan, pick up Entertainment Weekly. You can also go to EW.com, see what's going on in that fabulous magazine. If anybody says they're bored, they're nuts. Go to Entertainment (laughs) Weekly. You will be very entertained with all sorts of reading movies and the best books ever. And uh, Tina, happy holidays and thank you so much. Oh, thank you for having me.